Hello everyone, I'm Renee Lobo and joining me today we have with us Dr. Nilesh Soni. He's the doctor of physical therapy and he's the director of the rehab program in Hillside Manor. Uh, has a lot of experience for over 16 years now in this field and also has his own private practice in physiotherapy in Glen Oaks as well as in Flushing, Queens. And uh, today he's going to tell us all how you can avoid uh, osteoporosis, what is a good posture, what is a bad posture, little things that we sometimes don't even, we overlook but become very, very significant as we grow older. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Sony, for coming here. And uh, I know that you've done a lot of uh, medical camps, uh, health camps in the Vaishnav Temple in Queens as well, uh, giving that education to our community, uh, which is so very important about proper exercise, proper diet, um, you know, how to sit, how to sleep. I mean, proper right. postures in every place. Um, tell us, first of all, I know that physical therapy is actually uh, uh, what it is. It, it helps in the management of uh, movement disorders, uh, as well as after an injury or an illness or even developmental delays in kids um, or muscle deficiency or limb deficiency. It helps in the correction or at least in the treatment. And um, you've been doing this for over 16 years yeah. now. Uh, tell us first of all. I know that some people claim that they're physical therapists, but you have a you know you have a doctorate in physical therapy. That is very important when a doctor recommends physical therapy. You have to know where to go. First of all, let's start with how do we know who is a good physical therapist? Well, uh, thank you for having me over, Renu. Um, how do you know uh, whether you have a good physical therapist or not? First, uh, that person should be able to assess you thoroughly and give you indications of and uh, accurate indications of what problem you have and chart out a program uh, specific to your deficits in order to get back to your functions or alleviate your pain. Um, there are two ways of doing that. One is uh, the, the APTA, the American Physical Therapy Association. Um, the members of APTA are usually um, uh, practicing therapists who are uh, proud of their clinical skills. And secondly, our profession is uh, going towards the doctoring profession. Mm -hmm. So people who have done uh, specialization or uh, doctorate on physical therapy, so that's a second indication wow. of finding a good physical therapist. And the last one, uh, there are clinical specialists uh, mm -hmm. in uh, a lot of fields of uh, medicine available in physical therapy. I'm one. I've done uh, clinical specialization in geriatrics, uh, where a lot mm -hmm. of uh, problems related to osteoporosis and right. movement and posture and dysfunction come in play. So those are the indications. Also, you specialize in biomechanics. Yes, I have done one of the masters in uh, pathokinesiology and biomechanics. Uh, tell us, uh, tell our viewers what biomechanics is. Uh, it has, it's a science of human movement. Uh, you analyze movements, uh, you analyze how we sit and uh, how we work, how we uh, do movements at home. Mm -hmm. And looking at those uh, movement patterns, we can either uh, suggest corrections of them or aid to improve the movement patterns and prevent problems in future, musculoskeletal problems. I know because the way we sit or way we sleep, it, it does have a major impact on our spine. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, 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 people bend like that and it's the wrong way how to even pick up something, you know, bending your knees or, you know, how you're doing that. It also, these little things make a lot of difference and uh, people that get quick in their back because of how their posture was. Uh, we're going to talk about that uh, later in the program, but uh, I know that you brought some slides uh, for the prevention of osteoporosis. What is osteoporosis, you know, the, when your bone mass gets... Uh, low end, uh, especially when what is osteopenia, what is, what is osteoporosis, and who has more uh, proclivity towards that, you know, and some have genetic predisposition to it sure. as well. Uh, tell us, uh, what is osteoporosis? May I have the first slide? Yes. Uh, well, osteoporosis uh, is, uh, in very layman's term, it is thinning of bones. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, it's a condition where the bony infrastructure gets thin and it can uh, weaken to an extent that if no care is given, then it leads to breakage of those infrastructure, and that causes a fracture. So osteoporosis itself is thinning of bones. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Now, as you can see in this slide, yeah. uh, on the left, you have normal bony architecture. These are thick plates of bones which are in congruity. They are in continuous uh, uh, continuity to each other. Whereas on the right side, which mm -hmm. is an osteoporotic bones, you see the thin uh, plates and there's a breakage, breakage in the architecture of the uh, plates. So this is osteoporotic bone, uh, which leads to, it's a precursor of getting a fracture or uh, deformity in the spine. Next, please. 
So, uh, what is, uh, how would you make out your bone mass? Uh, most of the adults by age 30, they reach their peak bone mass. And uh, so, a normal bone or a healthy bone is where you have 90 to 100 percent of peak bone mass, you have thick plates and you have very intact microarchitecture of those plates. If you have 75 to 90 percent of the peak bone mass and uh, the plates are getting thinner but maintaining their architecture, then that is osteopenia, that is precursor of osteoporosis. And if your bo peak bone mass is less than 75 percent and the plates are thin and it is not up on the screen, but if you have disrupted micro architecture, mm -hmm. then that is osteoporosis. Now again, this is not um, uh, visible to naked eye, we have to go through test, uh, right. which we will mention within a few so minutes. Like, uh, let us say somebody has osteopenia and does that mean that they are going to land up with osteoporosis or you can prevent it at that point of time? If you um, uh, address your problems right when you start having osteopenia, uh, those changes are reversible by a uh, lot of stuff, uh, by good diet, uh, exercising, uh, medication and uh, changing your lifestyle like uh, quitting smoking, uh, oh, quitting drinking or eating the right food. So, if you start getting help while you have osteopenia, it is reversible, you can prevent osteoporosis. I see. So, have a look at the next slide that we have here. Now, uh, the general notion is that the only females and the uh, mm -hmm. ladies who are uh, post menopause, uh, they are at risk for osteoporosis, but that is not true. Anybody and everybody is at risk of osteoporosis. Uh, think of uh, bone as a bone bank, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you keep on depositing more and more bone and until the age of 30. After that, you start withdrawing more out of your uh, bones. And if you are not having correct lifestyle, then it can lead to osteoporosis. Um, or age 50 or people having uh, certain disease conditions uh, where you have to use corticosteroids or mm -hmm. you have a thyroid problem mm -hmm. or you have Crohn's disease. Those are the conditions uh, where uh, the medications as well as the condition itself can lead to um, uh, bone loss. I see. Next slide please. So, as we were mentioning anybody yeah. and everybody is at risk, but what are the risk factors? Uh, age. Now, these are the factors which you cannot change. Uh, we, we have to uh, be aware of them and try to work with that. Gender, uh, 4 out of 5 cases of osteoporosis are uh, mm -hmm. for fe uh, females. Postmenopausal status we just discussed before. Uh, Caucasian or Asian um, uh, they people are more, get uh, more prone for osteoporosis. Uh, now, small body frame, this is the fad right now. Everybody wants a thin body frame, but if you are weighing less than 127 pounds and you are not eating right, then you are at risk for osteoporosis. Um, if you are on medications uh, like uh, corticosteroids mm -hmm. or uh, uh, thyroid medications or uh, Caesar medications, some anticoagulants or diuretics uh, which are given during uh, people having a congestive heart failure. So, those are the medications can which can affect adversely to your condition of osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. Well, you talked about small frame and uh, let us say somebody, you know, many women are small, especially Asian women, uh, they may be just 5 feet right? and their weight may be ideal weight, maybe 115 right. and, but if it is less than 127, so they are, they could be uh, a disposition towards uh, osteoporosis, you think? Uh, this data is uh, from the data from American um, adults, however, uh, what I translate this into is uh, making people aware that uh, just having small body frame uh, with improper diet yeah. and uh, improper lifestyle, people try to skip meals uh, mm -hmm. just to be skinny or yes. people try to eat uh, less vegetables. Mm -hmm. So, those things can affect, so keeping those uh, uh, things in mind, uh, we have to um, you know look out for the risk for osteoporosis. But you are right, yeah there are uh, 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 females who um, who are short, so yeah. and their ideal body weight maybe yeah. less than 127 pounds, but they have small bone structure. Yeah. yeah. Let's take yeah. a look at the next slide. So diagnostic tests. How would you how would you uh, know whether you have osteoporosis or not? Um, well, the gold standard of osteoporosis uh, testing is uh, called the bone density scan or the DEXA scan. Now, uh, nowadays there are so many advanced equipments where you can put your wrist in or your finger in or your ankle in to know the 
uh, density of those bones. But those are screening tools uh, to get an accurate measure whether you have osteoporosis or not. Uh, till today, the anterior posterior view of your lumbar spine or the front view of your lumbar spine uh, or the lower part of your back is the gold standard of testing. Mm -hmm. What happens is you go uh, to the uh, testing center, they make you lay down and a, a computer screen uh, sort of goes over your uh, body mm -hmm. and determines uh, the bony content and gives you a result. So that is the gold standard right now. Now, uh, you'll be surprised that uh, we, we, are, we all love vegetables and you'll be surprised uh, vegetables can help you uh, prevent osteoporosis. What it does, uh, all those vegetables listed up here um, help you do is uh, enhance your calcium metabolism. Mm. And um, as you see, lettuce, uh, cucumber, garlic, uh, cabbage, tomatoes, and broccoli. Mm. Uh, so it's good to eat vegetables. Uh, our, mo our mothers and our grandmothers and our parents always stress uh, for us to eat uh, vegetables. So, of course, that will help you in the long run. If you eat right at a younger age, it will prevent a lot of Is problems. Is it better to eat raw vegetables or undercooked vegetables or just fully cooked vegetables? Well, any vegetable would be good. Uh, so that is, that's a start and then you can choose uh, raw, uh, undercooked. Or but it's not like one has more than the other uh, for I metabolism would say, for calcium. Uh, I would say uh, balancing your diet with vegetables and keeping uh, vegetables as part is important. And then comes the next step, whether it's raw or uh, uh, okay. partially cooked. So, coming to the next slide, why do we have weak bones? Well, uh, first of all, uh, I would blame it to our lifestyle. If we live a sedentary lifestyle and if we are not active, then uh, bones don't get challenged. So, bones get healthier and they get stronger and thicker by the stresses we put on them. Mm -hmm. So, doing physical activity or um, exercises will help you grow stronger bones. Uh, sunlight, now, mm -hmm. now on East Coast, when it is cold, uh, we, uh, we try to avoid going out. Um, uh, it's again, um, that's uh, one important factor. If not, uh, they say take vitamin D. Mm -hmm. um, Taking uh, or drinking soda, I was mentioning earlier uh, as we were discussing that uh, uh, sodas have phosphates in them. They leach uh, calcium out of the bones. Or eating canned food, uh, canned food have uh, sodium in it. Sodium replaces calcium, uh, affecting the bone metabolism, uh, affecting it adversely and leading to um, thinning of bones. So, uh, just drinking one uh, soda will not lead to problem, but having a lifestyle of drinking sodas for a longer period of time can uh, lead to problems with osteoporosis. Yes, how would you know I have it? Now, it's considered a silent disease. So, you wouldn't know that you have osteoporosis unless and until uh, you go through some uh, um, testing. There's no symptoms? Well, it's considered silent and uh, one of the symptoms is loss of height. Now, how many uh, persons, ha when you go for your physical, have you asked your doctor to check your height? Mm. No, right? Uh, we don't uh, usually ask that as being tested, but uh, the vertebras or the mm. spinal, um, you know, part of our body, the spinal column, loses height when uh, those bones become osteoporosis. That's one of the earlier signs. But uh, Many a times it is discovered upon a unrelated incident, like somebody, a elderly person has a fall yeah. and has a little ache in the back. They go to the doctor, the doctor says, let me check out on x-ray. So they take an x-ray, the bone is not fractured, but then the doctor says, oh, your bones are thin, you have osteoporosis, why don't you get tested with a DEXA? Mm -hmm. So that's one. The other one is uh, uh, somebody has a fall uh, on an outstretched hand and they fracture the wrist mm -hmm. or uh, they fracture the fifth metatars of the foot bone. And then uh, when the doctor runs the test, they found, oh, they have osteoporosis. That's why they are fracturing easily. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why it's considered silent disease. Most mm -hmm. of the people don't realize it. Unless they had a fracture or an injury at that time, mm -hmm. and then they go for DEXA scan or screening. Right. Now, uh, what would you do uh, to uh, start and uh, you know, prevent any problems is to ask for a test. Uh, if you fall in those risk groups, as we discussed earlier, or you are a postmenopausal woman, then you ask your doctor for a bone density test. The second thing you can do is uh, you can uh, consult a physical therapist. Uh, physical therapists can help you uh, make an exercise program, mm. 
uh, cater to your specific needs. Uh, they can evaluate your posture, they can evaluate your balance, they can evaluate your range of motion and then make an exercise program just specific for your type of body. Mm. And thirdly, uh, discuss with your dietitian uh, the diets, uh, uh, the dietary component of uh, taking care or of your lifestyle. Uh, see what foods are better with your own uh, religious or ethnic mm. backgrounds mm. and uh, accordingly you can uh, so you would say that a calcium that. supplement uh, is absolutely necessary for those who are having osteopenia or osteoporosis. It is necessary, but I would uh, again repeat myself that you need, it need to consult your physician because uh, now people try, there are so many things available, uh, what's say dietary aids available in the market and uh, one may complement or work against the other. So it's good idea to ask your physician or bring what you are taking when you visit to your physician. Because mm -hmm. they will be the best judge whether you need uh, 1200, which is a uh, 1000 or 1200 milligrams, uh, the standard doses for adults, or you fall in the 1500 category of, uh, you know, calcium. And not having excessive protein, as your slide mentions. Yeah. A lot of people think that I need protein to keep me going, but excessive protein, I think, is... is Can a, affect the yeah, metabolism exactly. adversely. Yeah. So, uh, it's a good idea to ask the physician as well as uh, you know consult a dietitian on your dietary needs. Mm. Just not pick up uh, dietary aids from any pharmacy or, or those health stores, mm. because uh, we feel that we are doing the right thing by just having a pill. Uh, it may or may not help you. So, what is physical therapy? What do they do? Uh, as we discussed earlier, we can make up an exercise program uh, which is appropriate for your condition. Uh, we can evaluate your posture. Mm. Uh, what is posture? It's the way you align your head, your shoulders, your uh, trunk, your hips, your knees. So you align your body in a particular way, whether it uh, to help or cause strain on your back. So we can assess that. Mm. Uh, we can assess your strength, which muscles are weak, uh, which needs to be strengthened. Mm. Uh, range of motion at your uh, in your spine, in your neck, in your uh, pelvis, right. and your overall endurance, uh, your ability to uh, walk longer distances or do an activity at work or at home. Mm -hmm. um, there are many studies out. There is one uh, which was out in 1994, which is called a Fiatron study, which was a landmark study in cases of uh, elderly females who exercise for a year, twice a week for five uh, days uh, over a period of one year. And at the end of the year, when they were tested again, they found that uh, the bone uh, mass increased significantly by exercises. by exercises. So that study is out. Um, I, I can what give kind of exercise were they doing that helped them to increase the bone mass? It was a combination of strength training, weight bearing exercises, mm -hmm. and stretching exercises. So stretching to improve posture, strength to improve the muscle strength, and weight bearing uh, mm -hmm. exercises uh, to improve the bone mass. So all of them combined, the effect of those exercises was improving bone strength and bone mass. So that, that's an established study. So now everybody is, nowadays is asking for a pill. <laughs> now, how, what can I uh, take to get better? So for the osteoporosis, I would suggest this e-pill. E-pill is the exercise pill. Okay. And the person who can give you the e-pill is a physical therapist. Right. There are many trainers uh, or physical trainers or you, in the gym there are trainers or exercise physiologists. But what I feel is that when a person undergoes any pathology, or has a musculoskeletal condition, then those people are better helped by a physical therapist. Mm. Because we would know where the deficits are, where, the, where strengths are, where the limitations of movements are, and then cater an exercise program for you. So when you talked about evaluating the posture while sitting, or especially when you're on the computer, right. you know, you get your neck hurts, you get the carpal tunnel syndrome as well. So right. what is the correct posture while working and sitting down? Very good. A lot of things you can do while sitting down. As we are sitting, uh, when we sit for a long time, use the armrest. When you're using the armrest, what happens? You are transferring some of your body weight from your upper body onto the armrest, mm. deloading your lumbar spine. Yeah. Secondly, uh, put your feet on the floor. Some people try to uh, sit on a high chair without supporting their feet. Mm -hmm. Second. Third thing is support your thighs. Mm. So two-thirds of your thighs should be supported in the chair. Okay. Okay. Fourth thing. Uh, if you are in a habit of crossing legs on one or another, 
make sure that you cr uncross and cross the other way too, right. right over left and left over right. If you just keep like this all the time, mm -hmm. then there's an unequal weight shift on oh. your lumbar spine. So because the best is not to even cross the leg. Well, if at uh, all, if, you don't want to. If you cross, you ex interchange between the two sides. Right. Just don't be in the habit of doing one leg over other, other mm -hmm. for an extended period of time. Um, the fourth thing is avoid sudden twisting while you're working in sitting mm -hmm. position. Uh, avoid sudden twisting to pick up a pen. Some people say, I got a backache just sitting in a chair and picking a pen from the floor. Avoid sudden twisting. Uh, sit close to work. Okay. What I mean by that is if you are working with a computer, 18 inches or one and a half feet is an ideal distance. If you don't remember the ideal distance, uh, remember to do two things. One is keep the computer monitor at the height of your uh, head mm -hmm. so you don't have to bend your neck excessively or mm -hmm. extend it as if you have to look into uh, okay. a, uh, like some people drive with an extended mm -hmm. neck. The third thing to do is to avoid forward movement of your head. Mm -hmm. What is to be aware uh, of your collarbone. Think. Uh, I'll give you a visual imagery. Think that you have a, the most precious pearl mm. or a diamond mm. and you're wearing the diamond just mm. over your collarbone. Mm. To show it off, mm. you cannot show it off like this. Mm. You have to, sh to show it off, you have to stick your breast bone out or the yeah. sternum out. Right, right. So think of that, that you have a uh, diamond, you're wearing the diamond the whole day and you want to show it off to people. Mm. That posture will improve. Uh, another visual imagery, think a shelf mm. is going out of your collarbone. It's, and you're putting hot tea. We are Indians, we drink tea, right? Yeah. So, hot tea on it. If you bend forward, the tea will spill off. Yeah. The cup will fall forward. If you bend backwards, it will fall on you. Mm. So, you want to keep it straight by having the shelf straight. So if you do that, you'll maintain good posture. Now, if there's another way, like, do you need a long back or a short back when you're sitting? If you just sit like this or you sit like that? Okay, very good question. Now, most of the chairs available today have a lumbar support. Yes. Use that. Right. You can uh, confirm. If you're getting tired in your back, you always go and support See, yourself. like this, but not like this. Okay. Now, yeah. if you slouch, yeah. everybody loves to slouch. Yes. We all slouch. The important thing to remember is to come out of the slouch periodically. Mm -hmm. If you keep on slouching, it leads to posterior pelvic tilt. Mm -hmm. In simple words, it leads to un unaccustomed pressure in the lumbar spine or excessive pressure in the lumbar spine leading to problem over a longer period of time. So what you want to do is you want to sit straight mm. and if you love slouching, come out of your slouch periodically to straighten your body. So you can go like long back then. Now in simple words, long back is where you straighten yourself. Yes, exactly. So you come up, straighten yourself but with the support of your arms oh, and the, with the support of your thighs over the chair mm -hmm. while your feet are on the floor. Mm -hmm. okay. Long back without any support, if I sit on the edge of the chair, mm -hmm. long back with my hands hanging, uh, within, 20, yeah, within 20 or 40 or 60 seconds I said start getting tired and then I start getting into a slouch. Right. So long back it's good when you are supported properly. With your arms and your... Right. But in any case, it's much better than shortening yourself in exactly, a chair. Yeah. In any case. Right. Okay. And lastly about the sleeping posture. Good. You know, do we sleep uh, straight on the back or on the side or on the stomach? Most of the people will uh, change postures while sleeping at night. Now, uh, if you sit, sleep straight with your legs absolutely straight, your knees and hips straight, then you're arching your lower back, just lying down on in bed. So you can flex your knees by putting a pillow underneath your knee, or you can assume a side lying posture on either side. Uh, people have a habit of um, having two or three pillows mm. while they lie straight. While you turn on the side, if you have two or three pillows, it will right. not spoil your back, but it will spoil your neck. neck exactly. So be mindful of that. Use uh, the appropriate amount of height for the pillow on the, uh, while you are turning on the side. And laying absolutely straight with your hips and knees straight mm. and flat on the floor for the whole night is not good. Mm. You, would, uh, you would get back it just laying uh, while you are sleeping. So it's good to change posture. Uh, somebody asked, what is your best posture? Mm. So I would say, the next posture is my best posture. Change. So the bottom line is, you change your posture. Mm. You don't keep one posture for a long period of time. Mm. And let's say, what is define long period of time? Mm. Anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes. I see. And you change your posture, go to the next posture. I see. That's great to know. I will have to have you back again because there's so much to learn about postures, physical therapy, you know, management of these disorders. Many times people get them 
little, little things make difference in our lives and sure. in our body as well and our limbs as well. Thank you very much, Dr. You're Sony. Uh, today our guest was Dr. Nilesh Sony, who's the uh, director of the rehab program in Hillside Manor in Queens. As well, uh, also has his own private physiotherapy practice in uh, Flushing as well as in Glen Oaks. And he's a doctor of physical therapy. I'm Renee Lobo. Thank you so much for watching.